Good morning and welcome to St Andrew's Brighton for this, the Feast of Christ the King. O shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins. Strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us, let us pray. Stir up, we pray you, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruits of good works, may by you be plenteously rewarded, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord, I myself will search for my sheep, and will seek them out, as shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among the scattered sheep. So I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out of the peoples and gather them from the countries and bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountains heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God, I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you have pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. 
I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he will feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Psalm 100 Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us, and we are his. We are the, his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, he is steadfast, and his love endures forever, and he is faithfulness to all generations. A reading from St Paul's letter to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the Lord God of Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power? God put his power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep on his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, and we gave you food, or thirsty, and we gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you are the accused, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, how much do we know God? This is not the same as asking, how much do we know about God? Because there is no earthly way to measure exactly how much we know about God. Remember, now we only see in a glass darkly, but in eternity we shall see him face to face. So, how much do we know God? Apostle Paul provides a clue in his letter to the early Christian community in Ephesus. From the scripture Ephesians, Chapter 1, verse 15. It seems they knew God very well because Paul thanks God as he has heard about their faith in the Lord Jesus and their love for all the saints. Paul is implying that knowing God is directly connected with faith in Jesus and the love for God's people, and he constantly gave prayerful thanks for that. But wait, here is more. In verse 17, Paul writes, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him. It seems that if we know God through faith in Jesus and our love for his people, the more our faith is and the greater our love is, 
we will receive Holy Spirit wisdom and re- revelation about God. How good is that? From our baptism until today, we may have been reading and studying the Bible. We may have been listening to lots of sermons. We may have been keeping a devotional life. But does all this prove that we know God well? No. Paul argues that people who genuinely know God are those who believe in Jesus and care for God's people. It's all about faith and love. So the starting point is faith and love. Importantly, the first is inwardly focused, but the second is outwardly directed. If you think about it, each is a reflect, reflection of the commandments: love the Lord your God, and love your neighbors as yourselves. Being obedient to these two commandments enables us to know God, and in order to progress from the starting point, we do need the Holy Spirit. Knowing God is not dependent on our intelligence or our theological knowledge, but requires the inspiration and the illumination of the Holy Spirit. The Pharisees wanted to place all their emphasis only in knowing God in the Scriptures. In Gospel John chapter five verses. Thirty-nine to forty, Jesus challenges the Jews by saying, "You diligently study the Scriptures because you think that by them you possess eternal life. These are the Scriptures that testify about me. Yet you refuse to come to me to have life." Having faith in Jesus Christ means that you then read the Scriptures for the sake of knowing more about God and finding how to have more love for God's people. Here, Paul especially tells us in verse 18 that you may know the hope to which He has called you. The riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparable great power for us who believe. Paul has not only presented us with a challenge to know God, but he has actually also told us the ways to know more about God. In verse 18, Paul asks God to illuminate the eyes in our hearts. These are spiritual eyes, and therefore need spiritual illumination. And who can provide better spiritual illumination than God's precious Holy Spirit? Can we find a brighter and a better lamb than that anywhere? Of course, not. Therefore, we must continue to pray for God's Holy Spirit to illuminate the eyes in our hearts and brighten us. Only a person with a hopeful heart. Can truly see God's grace and love. Today, I ask you humbly: Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you have love for God's people? Today is the celebration of Christ the King. It's a proclamation of our faith in Jesus, 
our primary starting point to knowing God. Let's give thanks and give all praise to our King, to Him who sits on the throne, to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. Let us together affirm the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, promised that you will hear us when we ask in faith. Receive the prayers we offer. Grant with your wisdom and power the leaders of the nations so that everyone may live in peace and mutual trust, sharing with justice the resources of the earth. Give the people of this land a spirit of unselfishness, compassion and fairness in public and private life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send out the light and truth of your gospel and bring people everywhere to know and love you. Enable those who minister among us to commend your truth by their example and teaching. May we gladly receive and obey your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your fatherly care, merciful God, all who are in sorrow, sickness, discouragement or any other trouble. Give them patience and a firm trust in your goodness. Help those who care for them and bring us all into your eternal salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise you for all your servants whose lives have honoured Christ. Encourage us by their example, so that we may run with perseverance the race which is lies before us, and share with them in the fullness of joy in your kingdom. Hear us, Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ said to all who turn to him in faith. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you. Let us pray. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of our dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. 
We are the body of Christ. His spirit is with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for our Saviour Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with the whole company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine, and we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. When he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup, and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, 
shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup, his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit, unite us in the body of your Son, and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Bountiful God, at this table you graciously feed us with the bread of life and the cup of eternal salvation. May we who have reached out our hands to receive this sacrament be strengthened in your service. We who have sung your praises tell of your glory and truth in our lives. 
We who have seen the greatness of your love see you face to face in your kingdom and come to worship you with all your saints forever. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.